Man, it's been a long time since I've been out here. You know, it's been so long since I've been out here to the kind of country. And where I'm from, San Francisco, everyone wears masks. But coming out here like this, nobody does kind of nice. I'm rigging up here. I'm about to hop in the water. I probably don't need it, but I've got my wetsuit for the ocean. And I'm going to do something that I've been wanting to do every single time that I come out here, but I always say I'm going to save it for later. But now I'm learning to seize the moment. I'm going to drift along while the sun is out and hopefully do some underwater fishing. You know, on second thought, I will be doing some underwater fishing. Well, it just depends if I'll be doing some underwater catching. Now, just coming out here, it's been so long since I've done a real solo camping trip. And just on the way out here, I've got that feeling like, man, you know, you're so busy at home. I've got two kids at home, a lot of things going on back home. And I just feel like I don't have time to get away. But coming out here, I feel my mind just unraveling. It's like you're a wound up ball in the city. And when you get out here, finally have time to relax and get away so my message is all the wives out there let your man go solo out just you know just just let him go just tell your wife I'm gonna be going out for a, for a few days take care of the kids or vice versa tell your man you want to go out and do some fishing or do some camping it's good to get away and just let your mind just clear your mind you know just let your mind be able to think so I'm gonna rig up here real fast. Like I said, the sun's setting. We've only got a few minutes. The sun sets so much faster in the mountains because there's hills on every side. And you know, you got probably an hour or two less than you would when there's no mountains. So nothing left else to say other than catch some fish, cook some dinner. This is day one of a camping trip, two day camping trip. I probably don't need this wetsuit, but hey, I don't like the cold, okay? And I'm not the best swimmer. So this is gonna act like a life vest and keep me warm. Now you probably thought I was like a dark guy, but actually this is my real skin color. Secrets out. Right, y'all. Here we go. This is how we're gonna start. Little worm. Simple, old school. Two split shots on the line. This is four pound test, and it's going to a regular old bait holder hook. No pinch barbs, because whatever I catch, I'm gonna keep, and I'm gonna eat. Limit is two fish here. I'm gonna thread this guy on, it's just like so, All right, over the barb, ready to go. You only live once, y'all. If I don't do this now, I'll probably never do it. Not exactly what I was going for. I did see one thing, it, it wasn't a mud sucker. No, it was a mud sucker, it wasn't a trout. But look, crawfish. If I could get 10 crawfish, this is only a little tiny section that I've explored so far. I'm slipping down the rocks, y'all, I'm slipping. If I could get 10 of these, I could have a meal tonight. Now, where do I put them? You know, it's funny. I actually thought that this crayfish was really big underwater. I thought it was like a giant lobster. And then, of course, when you get it out of the water, it's tiny. 
but I found this in my car, so I got a little something to hold them in. I also got a piece of bacon that I was gonna use for breakfast tomorrow, and I'm gonna put this in a soft spot, let them come around there, and then I'm just gonna grab them all, baby. Let's get a bunch, do some more exploring. Sun is down behind the hill, but we still got a couple hours of light. Hopefully you guys can see it on the underwater camera. Let's get back in there. It's just a little bit chilly when you get in there first, let your body calm down, get used to the cold, and then you're golden, especially with the sweatsuit, baby. crawfish over here but I don't see any fish so I'm gonna explore over there where it's a little bit deeper but I want to get like five more crawfish right here That was one of the most fun things that I've done out here ever. And look, these ain't no small crawfish. You know, I got my pick at them too. Look, these these aren't these aren't small claws, man. I mean, there's unlimited crawfish out there. Look at that! Look at my haul right there. Look at that. Looks like surprisingly, there's no fish out here. I mean, that's kind of weird. No fish in this hole little pond big big pond crazy who getting cold I'm gonna go get back in the Sun get dried off and it's about time for dinner so crawfish potatoes onion avocado that's for dinner oh, that was seriously one of the most fun little things that I've done on a freshwater trip ever and it was at first I was a little bit scared to grab them just because they look giant underwater but when you get them out of water just like you're going for rockfish or abalone or something like that 
they're really not that big once you get out once you get them out of the water so that was the trick just lift them up and they're super aggressive there must not be much food because there are no fish out there either but get them up they're distracted trying to grab on that food and just grab them just don't hook yourself and you could even even um just tie a piece of bacon on there all i used was a tiny piece and i caught all these there's got to be at least 15 15 20 good ones too and you got your own pickings the only thing is uh when you put the bait on the bottom you want to put your weight right on the bait too that way the bait goes exactly where you want so right now i'm just driving along oh uh, driving along the dirt road steep cliff next to me uh, I'm gonna go cook this up, but after I do, I, I got a story to tell you. And tomorrow we're going deep, deep into the forest, ditching the car, biking in several miles. Oh, geez, I'm turning on the windshield wiper and everything. All right, let me drive, focus on driving, and then I've got a story to tell you guys in a minute. You know, normally when I come out here, for whatever reason, I always tend to starve myself, and torture myself. But today, I decided I'm going to have a nice time. So I brought some good food. I got a bunch of these little tiny little cherry popper tomatoes, potatoes, and rinse them off, get started on dinner. That was still so fun. I'm just so excited about that still. Looks like we've got ourselves a nice rolling boil. I'm just gonna add some salt, pepper, and garlic. So about two years ago, I came out here to make a video. I came out here on my bike, and there's a road that's about eight miles long. And the road goes up and down towards the river, back up 200 feet, back down towards the river. And it's about eight miles long and at the end of the eight miles is where the fishing spot was so about four miles into the into that road that dirt road i was biking along i saw an old volvo on top of the hill and i thought that's kind of weird for that car to be parked right up there it's not down here by the water so he's probably not fishing but i didn't think too much of it i thought he just might be hunting so on i went past the eight miles did my video I actually made that video and afterwards came back out the next day and the car was still there now, I didn't think much of it until I passed it about 200 yards I passed it and I thought this is really strange something feels off about this so I turned back around went back to the car and took a picture of its license plate fast forward two weeks I completely forgot about that car and then it struck me, I remembered, oh yeah, I did take a picture of that license plate. So I went on Google, typed in the license plate, and guess what I found? Yeah, look at this one. It's a giant, y'all. Just gonna rinse these three, get all the sand off. Gosh, but look at those claws on that one. That one's got a lot of meat. And those claws actually have a lot of meat too. Those potatoes, those onions, they're all going to crisp up. I'm going to get some of these crawfish ready and ready to go. So these guys are big. Let's just bite into this claw and let me show you just exactly how big this is. Because these got meat in here. Look at that little thing. Look at that little thing. I mean, it's small compared to a crab or a lobster. But hey, that's big for a crawfish out here. And about 15 of those, actually 30, there's two claws per, 
that's totally worth it. Rip off the tail, rip off the head, take off the body, or take off the shell, and then you've got a big pile of meat. And what you do with that meat here, you could peel from the front, right here from the front. And go over the back here, and then all that will peel right out. and you're left with something you can dip in some butter. All right, potatoes are done. Let's eat. All right, man, it's good to have a meal. This is a first for me, especially with these potatoes and onions just brown just slightly. But now back to the story. I searched on Google, and there was a Facebook group for a missing person with that license plate. They had no leads whatsoever. And remember, out here, there's no reception at all. So who knows how long this guy could have been missing. I contacted the family. I contacted the police department from the area. They confirmed to me that this was the first lead they had. The whole squad came out here. And I guess long story short, about a month later, a hunter was out here and he found the body. So you know, there was a body or Something was going on about a mile away from where I was that night, which is crazy. I mean, he could have been passed away already or, you know, who knows. But I guess the moral of the story is if you have some gut instinct telling you something's wrong, don't ignore that. You know, it could be in the club. It could be out here with a random car. It could be just this feeling you get walking down an alley. Don't ignore your instincts. They're very important and they could be life-saving or life-changing. So tomorrow, I'm going deep into the woods on the bike, passing by that same spot. Today, I'm more prepared than I've ever been, at least for protection. So people have told me before that it's not necessarily the four-legged creatures you gotta worry about out here. Sometimes it's the two-legged creatures. But just for example, if there was a bear coming to attack me, he would probably get me before I even had a chance to shoot him with a gun or spray him with bear spray. But either way, I think it's good practice to come out here and just be prepared. So I've got my Glock 20, 10 millimeter. I got this for for bears, honestly. It's a big round and, you know, it's always good to have it. So I'm gonna have this Laura Croft style. It's the best analogy I got, but I'm gonna get my tent set up tonight. Get my sleeping situation all good before the light goes down. And I'll see you guys on the next one.